what is in the student's portfolio to allow us to have visual and active uh, learning, learning in small groups? Well, we have to have a goal sheet. What's the student's big goal and what is their goal for the week? We have to have a record so that we can assess, did they do work this week? And this, this is called portfolio ass assessment. Most schools want to have a weekly test. Well, one way to do this is to have a test ongoing. The story I tell my students is that when I went to get my certification as a motorbike um, driver so that I can drive motorbikes, I went through it uh, a whole weekend, it was two days, and I knew that there had to be a test at the end to make sure we'd uh, completed uh, and we could show that we understood how to do things. And it was getting towards 4.30, and so I raised my hand and said, will we have time for the test? I'm expecting it should be at least an hour long, and I've got a place to go to by 6. And the instructor said, well, you've been going through the test all day. I wouldn't move on to the next skill until every person had demonstrated that they understood the concept and could lift the bike or make a turn. So um, you've actually gone through a series of tests and you didn't even know it. So that's what this portfolio does. You're able to look and see, okay, this is what the students said they did. And now we look over here, right? you look over here and you'd see their work and you actually be able to grade their work. So, um, there's also handouts and a list of projects and then the student work. The way I ask students to usually lay it out is I ask them to put their individual education plan uh, first, first work on that, and they know how will you be using English five years from now. You could do this, how will you be using chemistry or math? You know, give, give them the big picture. And then what will be your job or what will you study at university? And then here's a list of possible projects that they can check. Now, that's the individual education plan. On top of this goes the checklist so that when you first open up, you, the, it's very easy for them that you can just write each day what they did. Then the teacher flips this and checks, aha, uh -huh, how does that work? compared to what's going on here. The way I've organized this is that I put the goal for the week at the top of the little page, the daily what I did this week, what I did today. The goal for the week goes here and then you look back and see if it's related to the big goal the students are working towards. This is the essential element. That's the end of the training right there. Um, the rest is just commentary. Um, I've got some web sheets that I give people. I prime them by telling them what kind of, you know, that this, I'm adapting this system to their learning style. And then for students that really want to understand what the portfolio method is, I've got an article that I put together. And so that's the photocopies I hand out, basically. Um, I've got a half page, and then I've got their individual education plan, I've got some priming quotes, and the method. So that's three and a half sheets. This is a half sheet. The portfolio is intentional. Yes, if you have a, a binder, you can put things in there, but I like it when students personalize. I ask them to put their name on the outside, on both sides. And some students just start writing all sorts of things on there. They draw pictures. It's fascinating because it's a way for us to get to know them better. So the typical week looks as follows. The, when you first bring in the students, you've got to get them warmed up, so you're spending the first class setting this up, and they are planning their work by going through this list. Um, people are going fast, 
I put on the back side a mistakes list so that they can get their grammar. They say, oh, I need grammar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, there's plenty of grammar on the back, Friedrich. There you go. And then, you know, the next day you walk in and students are working on their projects because they want to be able to write something here now. What I've done is I put newspaper because I want um, people who want a structure for each day. I'm just going to say, clip a newspaper article, put it in here, write a summary of what it's about, and underline any new words you want me to find. I ask them not to use a dictionary. I ask them to um, let me tell a story to them because using a dictionary this is the way I put it. I say, okay, if you're reading, you're only highlighting one part of your brain. And that's it. You're reading it, and it's stuck there. Now, if you speak it to somebody, now you're highlighting another part of the brain. And if that other person is speaking back to you, aha, now you've got your listening center. So now you have three centers firing and then, of course, if you write something, that sparks something else. So you've got four different things going on. But if you just look at a dictionary, you've only got one thing sparking. That usually gets students to stop using a uh, dictionary. Well, that's what's in the student's portfolio. Um, on Wednesday, I just check, there's usually 10% of the students who have blanks for, you know, the three days. Um, I give them points based on what they actually did, if they did anything. And then, is their portfolio up to date? I'll give them some points there. I put in an extra just in case, you know, just to give them a communication. Hey, you can do this. And I've got some suggestions on the bottom here of what they can also do. I'm hesitant about giving actual copies of this because I want you to discover what to do. However, if you want specific examples of what these forms look like, um, you can find them on scribed.com, which is a uh, fabulous sharing site. Um, you take the word described and you take away the DE and the E. Okay. Scribed.com. So goodbye to the described. S C R I B D.com. If you look for Steve McRae, you'll see some of the um, items that I've put up there. I hope you have enjoyed spending eight minutes now and a uh, previous nine minutes. So in under 20 minutes, you've gotten a key for what um, Ariana said which is basically, she wants the new methods. I think a student like me could use really modern methods. To study English, you need more than grammar. The perfect way to learn a language is by practicing. And she uses Facebook. And you should give the student all the things you know and then let her choose the things she wants to do. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'd like to improve this.